Boats can't reach high speeds because of the friction between the hull and the water. In 1877, John Thornycroft, a brilliant British boat designer, suggested that trapping air under a boat might reduce the friction problem. He tested his idea with a scale model of a flat-bottomed boat with a recess underneath. Air trapped in the recess lifted the boat almost out of the water, increasing its speed. Later, he built a much more complex model using a clockwork mechanism connected to bellows. The bellows pumped air underneath the boat. As it passed through the water, the air acted as a lubricant, reducing the boat's friction and once again increasing its speed. Sadly for Thornycroft, his boat needed better engine technology than existed at the time. The patents were never exploited. Over half a century later, another inventor took up the challenge and built the first full-sized hovercraft. That man was Christopher Cockerell. His dedicated belief in the air cushion principle earned him a place in the history books as the inventor of the hovercraft. When he unveiled the first prototype of his extraordinary machine, the press was amazed. The headlines called it the flying saucer, but they did not believe it could possibly work over water. So the scientists took it out onto the bay for its first ever flight over the sea. It just sailed off into the water as I expected it to. In fact, they were all rather amazed and I knew it would happen. Cockerell was a well-respected engineer. He already had many patents to his name. He knew the hovercraft would work because of his early experiments, using an air blower, two tin cans, one inside the other, and a set of scales. The air from the blower alone hardly moved the scales. But if you expand this by turning it into a circular jet, so that the air comes out in a thin curtain of air like that, then and this will support a bigger load as a hovercraft than using just a straight jet. In 1955, he built a prototype to prove his theory. Once he was sure it would work, he tried to market his idea. I took it round the aircraft industry, but were told it wasn't an aircraft, it was a ship. And I tried taking it round some of the firms that made ships. And they said, no, that's not a ship, that's an airplane. Finally, he approached the British government. They were so impressed that they immediately classified it top secret. Then they sent experts from the armed forces to visit Cockerell. I had a model which was that I made whizzing round and looked very dangerous. And one of them climbed on the chairs to get out of the light of the damn thing. The Navy chap sort of looked up like that and said, <laughs> useless, wouldn't stand any sort of a seaway, wouldn't last a minute. The Army and the Air Force were also unimpressed. It took two more years before the government funded a study of Cockrell's hovercraft theory. Air enters through the inlet at the top. The fan blows it through a circular slit around the bottom. This produces a curtain of air which blows down all around the outer edge of the vehicle trapping a bubble or cushion of air beneath the hovercraft. It's literally riding on air. After exhaustive testing, the scientists finally unveiled a full-scale prototype in 1959. One month later, Cockrell's amazing invention proved itself once and for all. Cockrell shipped his craft across to Calais, France. Early one morning, the so-called flying saucer set off to cross the English Channel. It was the 50th anniversary of the first plane flight across the channel. Cockerell was anxious to show that his hovercraft could make the 22-mile crossing just as easily. At first, they made good progress. But as they sighted the white cliffs of Dover, they hit choppy water. For the first time, the hovercraft encountered rough seas. 
and it was quite a thrill because you got up a wave and then you slid down it nicely and got up another one. And then we shot up the shore at Dover and uh, some BBC chap turned up to me and said, uh, will you come with me and do an interview? And I said, no, I want some breakfast. <laughs> <laughs>